This show was part of a continuing series that takes a deeper dive on important issues that will help shape the 2018 elections. In this episode, we talk to a Red for Ed organizer about how education is playing in several elections. Later, our team of reporters will help you consider how this plays out heading into November and beyond. Let's get started. When the Great Recession hit, Arizona schools suffered. State lawmakers eventually cut nearly $1 billion per year of spending on K-12 education. One of those cuts was not raising district budgets to account for annual inflation. In 2010, some school districts sued, claiming that was illegal. As Arizona's economy recovered, educators sued the state to recoup money slashed from their budgets in the recession, and the courts agreed. To end the legal battle, Governor Doug Ducey proposed Proposition 123, which added several billion dollars to public education. Here's Ducey in an ad. When it comes to public education, Arizona has a lot of great stories to tell, but we can do a better job of supporting our teachers. That's why I'm voting yes on Prop 123 on May 17th. The proposition was in large part funded by the state's century-old land trust and was narrowly passed by voters in 2016. But funding for schools still fell far below earlier levels. A year later, the legislature enacted a law that would effectively allow many more parents to siphon money from public schools to help fund private school costs for their kids. Opponents started a referendum drive that succeeded in letting voters decide this November whether to allow that law to remain on the books. The focus on public education funding reached critical mass this spring when tens of thousands of teachers and their supporters marched on the state capitol demanding higher pay and more funds for their schools. Ducey helped end the unprecedented walkout by proposing and pushing through the legislature a pay raise that will deliver nearly 20% pay increases to some teachers by 2020. Still, school funding remains about $700 million per year under what it used to be 10 years ago. With Noah Carvalis, who led the Red for Ed movement, thanks for joining us. Red for Ed started as this sort of insurgent group proposing radical change. Now it's kind of moved to a quieter, doing regular election type stuff. Uh, how are teachers reacting to that change? Um, they're reacting well because what we're still focused on right now I don't think is actually a radical change. It's a change just we're just trying to get back to where we were. We're trying to go back to our 2008 funding levels and so um, because we've kept those goals so similar educators are reacting very well and they're realizing that they need to stand up and fight whether that's uh, through the walkout, whether that's through actions at their school or through the ballot they're realizing that we need to find answers for the funding crisis. And you mentioned the, the ballot effort, the Invest in Education Act uh, would bring in $690 million by raising income taxes on the wealthiest uh, earners here in Arizona. So, you know, what are you hearing from educators regarding that proposal and, and why is this proposal uh, the way forward to kind of what, like you mentioned, bring back Arizona to where it was in 2008? Just right after the the walkout finished, educators I think were um, they were they were devastated because we still had this seven hundred million dollar hole in our funding. So it it took a little bit, and I mean a matter of days really, for educators to realize, okay, this is the next step. And once they realized the next step, and that we had an answer for that seven hundred or six hundred ninety million is the projection, and we could solve the education crisis, they really reacted strongly. And there's um. There's been continued sustained support during uh, the circulation of the petitions and gathering the signatures. I mean, teachers were out all the time. They were at the zoo, they were at um, the local theater, they were going anywhere, Diamondbacks games, to get these signatures. And that just really shows the dedication where they're continuing this effort not for a week or for a month, but it's been months and months of sustained activity and more than just putting on the red shirt, right? They're out there hitting the pavement, they're talking to their neighbors, they're circulating petitions, they're taking actions at their at their uh, job site. All of these things are, are incredibly encouraging and just shows the dedication of the educators. There is an argument and it's been made by some business types, some columnists here at the Republic and our editorial board that this is unfair, that, that it's not just the burden on the richest Arizonans uh, to pay for education. What is your 
a response to that? I think one of the most important things to keep in mind is that this isn't the only thing that funds education if it passes. We have a ton of other funding mechanisms. This is just one additional one that plugs that gap, and it's also a really focused tax. It's not gonna tax their entire income. If you're making over $250,000, that excess amount is gonna be taxed at a higher rate. So that's why we're not raising a billion or $2 billion here. We're raising that 690 so that we can get back to our 2008 level. So it's a really focused tax, and it's on a, a portion of the population that we think can contribute more because they're making more above that $250,000 threshold. You know, talking about the shelf life of the movement, you know, the walkout happened in late April. I mean, what what is the lasting, what do you think the lasting effect of, of this movement is going to be, you know, in November? Mm -hmm. I think the lasting effect now, and I think there's no going back from this, is that teachers are engaged in the political system here in Arizona, and there's no return from that. And I think that'll be the lasting legacy of this. It'll be beyond the walkout, it'll be beyond the ballot, it'll be beyond the red shirts. It'll be that teachers became engaged in the political process in Arizona. Noah Carvalis, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Earlier today, we talked with Noah Carvalis of the Red for Ed movement to try to get a sense of how people's moods about education could shape the 2018 elections. He seems to be pretty optimistic about how education and the Invest in Ed ballot initiative will, will play come November, but he also seems to be underplaying the opposition that is surely going to come once they make the ballot. I think he's very idealistic. I mean, he mentioned, you know, he feels like he has the truth and he's going to use that and that will prevail. And I, I don't know that he's seen the machine that we sometimes see from the PR groups and the slick ad campaigns and how, what kind of an influence that may have. I mean, we've seen education ballot measures in the past fail because of how it was spun and how it was perceived. And it's a significant force it can have. Yeah, I guess in this day and age, you would think with uh, the prevalence of social media that television ads uh, wouldn't have that same push or same effect that they have in traditional campaigns, but the Chamber of Commerce has already said they will oppose this ballot initiative, so who knows what people will see on their TV screens, on their cell phones, and the messages that are, are going to get out there that are going to be competing with what he has as a pretty pure education forward message. And I think, you know, the, the optimism that he displayed kind of speaks to just the, the energy that, that teachers, uh, you know, are feeling after the, the walkout. Um, I think it's, it's hard to kind of characterize what level of support educators have with this ballot initiative. It's clearly not as much as, as, as the support that we saw with the walkout, which was, you know, pretty significant, not only from educators, but from the public. And so um, you, you have seen that drop. Again, you know, it's hard to, to say whether it's, it's a significant drop or, or a minor drop, but um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, how teachers are able to um, you know, coalesce around this initiative if it does qualify for the November ballot. Yeah, on the other hand, I mean, last legislative session, we didn't think people would be able to put the uh, voucher bill uh, on the ballot. They did, and we don't know what kind of social influence teachers will have once the school year kicks in again. I mean, the, the people will galvanize behind the teachers for the most part, at least up, up until when the walkout started. I when, think, when, yeah, I mean, I, I think you will be seeing slick ads from the governor, his allies, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, certain business interest groups that do not want to see uh, the wealthiest uh, taxed. And uh, I think that there probably is a pretty powerful case to be made that uh, they have done, the, the legislature has uh, done something pretty extraordinary when compared to years past on this issue. And, um, and, and that might be enough to uh, assuage, you know, uh, voters um, of fears that their school down the street isn't going to be properly funded. I mean, I don't think that that argument can be underestimated either. And when you combine that with concerns for the ESAs, with this growing group of teachers that we've seen running for local issues, a new interest in school boards and who's running for those, you combine all that and get all those people at the ballot, and it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of an influence they have on these measures and on higher offices, too. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as Noah's mentioned, the Red Fred movement w wanted a lot of things. They got teacher pay raises. Some will dispute whether the math shows that they got the 10 percent or the 20 percent they're going to get. And Governor Ducey, on his Twitter feed, in television ads, 
that his campaign is running and that an outside education group is running just tout over and over again those figures. Will the reality in the schools be different? Will, will parents go back to the schools? Will teachers be able to say, look, we're still using the same textbooks. Yes, your bus is still rickety. Uh, the, the, the air conditioner, the, the roof, uh, you know, Tucson said that uh, if a computer breaks this school year, there is no money left to replace it. They've put it all towards teacher salaries. So what will the ground, on, will the on the ground reality reflect what the Ducey message is, what the Chamber of Commerce message is that says education is being well funded in the state? And I think, you know, the, the Invest in Ed campaign and the Red Fred organizers are really playing to that, that argument that they made during the walkout, um, which is really, you know, just the, the raw frustration here. Um, you know, they're selling this as, um, look, you know, it's been 10 years and we're not nearly close to where we were in 2008 with, re with regards to funding levels. Uh, we don't want to wait till 2022, 2023 to just get back to where we were a decade and a half ago. So. Um, Will be interesting to see, you know, how that resonates with voters, and if, if that uh, is a stronger argument than what we're going to see from the PR machines. And There's also a fundamental issue of fairness, and it's been raised by our editorial board. Uh, our columnist Lori Roberts has raised it that why should the rich be the only ones to be taxed here, and and uh, will this kill jobs? Will it stop the entrepreneur from investing in a new business? And we've already seen the governor do seek you know, tout uh, the state's economic progress since the Great Recession. He admits that, you know, governors and state leaders aren't necessarily, uh, they don't get to always take the credit when good things happen with the economy. But if people start to feel optimistic about the economy, I could see this thing going down to the wire. Thanks for joining us.